<laughs> Hi. Welcome to Dining with the Diva. There goes Andrea running away to hide. He doesn't want to be in the video. Um, we're getting ready for Easter week. And uh, I don't do um, church or anything like that. But I was raised Catholic. And, of course, living in Italy is such a, a Catholic country. Um, Fridays have always been a day to eat fish. And a traditional fish dish in Florence, because we're not at the sea, would be baccalà de Livornese, which is a, a poor people's fish. It's, a, it's cod, which is not expensive, uh, but to preserve it, it was aged in salt. So usually you get a nice big piece of fish packed in salt, um, and then you have to soak it. So I have a piece of cod right now um, soaking. Let me just hold this up for you. It's just the two of us, so a nice piece of cod soaking. But I was very, very lucky in that I could buy it already soaked on Friday. So I was at the store today and bought it soaked. Otherwise, it's um, cheaper to buy it salted. So most people buy it salted and then soak it for a couple of days. Hi, Holly. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. Um, so I thought today we'd just do the most basic of all fishes, which is this... Um, salt cod and it's a very simple recipe which I really love. Very few ingredients as most of my recipes are. They're traditional Tuscan recipes. So um, this starts with a base of a leek. This is called a poro, P-O-R-R-O, -R -R -O, poro. And so um, we're just going to slice it and just use the very tender part. Now often leeks are, are very dirty. They get um, a lot of mud in them. I've seen usually in America. I would have to um, open these and then <clears throat> I kind of flip through them to see if there's any mud. These are very clean. Let me just show you. Very clean. So I don't need to rinse these off. But otherwise I would need to um, rinse the mud out of this. And I see this has a big hard core. So I'm going to take that core out and just do the delicate little inner inner leafy parts. And this is going to be, you know, eaten with a, a fork, so I'm going to cut this into nice thin little slices. Hi Karen. Ciao. Um, could you use, yeah, the green parts, you could throw these into um, a stock pot. Um, most vegetable scrapings can often, you can clean them and wash them, you can just throw them I'll keep in a pot of boiling water with all the other leftover vegetable things. Carrot peelings, um, parsley stems. A lot of people just keep things in a plastic bag in the freezer until they're ready to use them. Um, Florentines love leeks. I love leeks too. It's a milder kind of an onion. If you don't have leeks, you could use onions. So I'm just going to simply cut these. I'm using a small cutting board here, so I'll put it on my stove so you can see that. Hi Christopher, ciao. My, my nephew just stopped by. <clears throat> so did you guys see that I'm uh, saving these videos to YouTube so you can find them later? And uh, I love all the comments I'm getting. That's really fun. <clears throat> so this is just going to be one week. This could also, after you eat the fish, you could also save the tomato sauce for a pasta sauce. A lot of times, one day I'll do the, the, the Naples um, dish, which is called pesce in aqua pazza, crazy water. Cover the bottom of my pot with olive oil, and I like to be generous. Since we have very few ingredients, you want to be sure they're all really good. I only use extra virgin oil, and I'm covering the bottom of the pot. I heard in California, well, I'm sure in America, that, um, just make sure this is on. <coughs> The Costco olive oil is really from Tuscany, so that's really nice. Hi, Terry. Um, okay, so you, you've probably heard about all the scandals about olive oil, how they can filter it and add chemicals to it and purify it and clean it. And when they say you can't fry in olive oil, that's because uh, that chemically treated olive oil will break. Extra virgin olive oil, which is just the olives picked from the tree, crushed within 48 hours, and then kept really well. Um, I deep fry in that all the time, and there's no problems whatsoever. But if you don't know where your oil is coming from, then you have to be careful. So usually in America, people like to fry in um, what sunflower seed oil, corn oil, peanut oil. 
I think peanut oil gives things too much of a Chinese flavor for me. Um, I'd rather use like a sunflower seed oil, something very mild. So I'm just going to start cooking the leeks first. And then we're going to add uh, a little bit of my tri another trinity, which is the um, garlic and, and chili peppers. Now, I was looking these up the other day for somebody. Let's see if I can show you these. Can you see these? They're um, very tiny, and I think they're called, um, I call them bird's eye. Uh, you can also find them, I think, in Mexican cooking. They're very small. Very fruity, flavorful chili. Three would be the max I would use in a recipe. Hi, Sally. Massachusetts. Yeah, Costco is good. Um, Costco is good. And I have another friend who is down in the cowboy country in Marema. And he is one of the farmers that's contracted out for the Lucchini brand of olive oil. So I know they also use real, real farmers. And they have different... When I was just back in America, they have different oils, and they label them where they're from, which I think is very interesting. So you can get the Pugliese oil, Tuscan oil, Sicilian oil. There's oil from many regions, and um, they all kind of match to the cuisine from those areas. We tend to use a lot of steak and pork, so I put the chili peppers in there, and it, just one garlic clove. We don't use a lot of garlic here. Um, I think most of the southern Italians that tend to use more, more garlic. They usually have hotter climates. If you think about it, like Indian food and Mexican food both use a lot of spices. Chili pecan. Yeah, that's what I think it's called. Thank you, Celia. That was very nice of you. Yeah, they're really tiny little chilies. And um, we don't use black pepper when we cook, so this is our pepper. And I just, I love the, it's, uh, it's got heat. But it's also a higher ratio of chili to seeds, where sometimes those big chili peppers are, have tons of seeds in them, and then that gets really hot. So if you want the flavor, you have to throw away all the seeds, and then you just use the chili peppers. I'm just watching to make sure I want the leeks to, um, to saute. And then I bought a, um, a local organic tomato sauce, and it's kind of a chunky sauce. Um, often I use um, the San Marzano tomatoes that come directly from a little town called Sarno, which is just under um, Mount Vesuvius. And so they, when you talk about the San Marzano tomatoes, people get really crazy because they've worked really hard to perfect this tomato in the original soil that it was grown in, and it has a special flavor. And when I, I can smell the food when like people can walk in the room with like a plate of this. You can smell the difference of the really good tomatoes. Hi, Jim. Jim Eddie, my old high school buddy. Um, there's a lot of plum tomatoes that are really nice, but um, the thing that's nice about these tomatoes I buy, and I buy the ones from Gusto Rosso, Danny Co-op. It's cooperative. And God, like everyone's like these old couples working the fields, and they're like manicured gardens. They're really beautiful. I'm going on July, I think it's 29th this year to the San Marzano Day. Went last year, it was really fun. You walk through all the gardens and they bring all these chefs down and then you um, get to taste all the food made by the chefs and, and see their gardens and how much work really goes into to harvesting tomatoes. So the same thing like olive oil, when it's a really good olive oil, people harvest by hand and pick and then crush. The same thing with these San Marzano tomato people is that they, they have pride in what they're doing and they, they hand pick every day. The tomatoes at the bottom ripen first and then they, they work their way up the plant, the ones on the top are the last ones to ripen. And they don't pick the tomatoes unripened and let them ripen in rooms. They're, they're picked when they're ready to be, to be um, processed, to be canned. So, you know, why spend all your time cooking with bad ingredients or something that's not perfect? You know, sometimes you just don't care and it's cheap and it's fun. But if I really want something to be special, uh, it's my time that's really, I think, the value. So I'm going to use this organic uh, tomatoes, and it's really funny when they make your own tomatoes at home in the summer, like in August, everyone goes crazy. They recycle bottles, so you might see Coca-Cola bottles, beer bottles, those kind of big family style beer bottles. So my um, leeks are just starting to get golden now, which is perfect. So I'm going to add the tomato sauce. Okay, can you hear that? I think I mentioned the other day, I, I love to just cook with no music or anything, because I can hear everything. Now you never waste anything. I'll put water in this. I'm going to 
to shake it to get all the tomato sauce out of here. already is just like a basic tomato sauce with a little kick, garlic, olive oil, chili pepper, remember? And the leeks are nice instead of an onion. And then I'm going to add some um, salt. There's no salt in the canned tomatoes, so you also have to think about that. Hi Chris, Kristen, how are you? Oh, Michael Baston, hi, how'd your octopus turn out? One of my followers. And then... While this is going to cook down in flavor, what we want then is to um, get out our cod. So it has the skin on it, that's fine, but what I'm going to do is feel for the bones. So a lot of people just use tweezers. I just kind of grab it. And you want to pull out these, uh, I think they're called pin bones. When I was a little kid, I, um, I choked on fish bones, so I'm very picky about not serving people food with bones in it. Okay. Just checking in on everybody. I'm going to get scissors to try to grab this a little better with. I'm not going to grab it so much that I cut them, but I am going to grab it to... My fingers are kind of slippery. So needle-nosed pliers would be good for this, or our little tweezers and just go through the whole thing and I'm just kind of, you can feel them, there's little pit, bits that stick out. Okay. And they're usually this little side piece right over here. Hi Charlene, buongiorno. Okay, I've got a couple more. And I've got this really um, kind of going on high heat, and I'm going to just turn it down a little bit. I don't want it to get too thick on me. But usually you could always start your tomato sauce, put your water on the boil, and then think about how you're going to flavor it. I usually always start with garlic, olive oil, and <clears throat> chili pepper often, because I like the little kick in the chili. And chili, if you notice, is also used a lot when they have um, um, starches. So it makes your starches easier to digest. So, you know, I think about like beans and rice in Mexico or India, same thing. Okay, those are all gone now. Then these are the nice big filet, which is in here. It's really beautiful. The Napolitano dish that I like to make is called um, aqua pazza. And it's kind of the same idea. You do the same thing, but then they all put the fish in here and then um, throw mussels around the fish and then bake it in the oven. And while that's happening, you would... Um, Boil your pasta water, and then you take out the pasta water, dress it with uh, just the tomato sauce, and put the fish on the side. So often it's done with a whole fish. I like to do it with like nice big fillets like this for a party. But you would just lay the fish in there, and then take the fish out with a little sauce, and then toss the spaghetti in that sauce, and then with the fish. It's really great. People often didn't have enough money to have, and the same thing went with meat, uh, meat for both courses to have like a beef ragu and then have um, a main course. So you'll find this often where the meat or fish is cooked in the sauce and then the served separately to have two courses. Hi Mary, bonsoir. Okay, let's see what Michael did with his octopus. Perfecto, cooked it your way, then chopped and tossed with saute. Oh, potatoes and chorizo, yummy. Okay, he made my octopus that we did the other day. And that video when I was doing the, I think the spinach and ricotta flan, did I do it then? Or the risotto? I did um, two recipes. That must have been the risotto day. So I'm going to now brown, get some oil going here, and brown the fish so it gets a little crust on it. I'm going to cut this into serving size pieces. I'm going to cut off that, this little tail piece by itself and just cut this into two. Okay, with the skin, and then while that's heating, we're just going to lightly flour these. This is just plain, all-purpose flour. Thank you, thank you, Christine. 
Yeah, I think a lot of times, one reason I wanted to do, like I did in my cooking class, and talk to you while we're cooking, instead of just showing you videos with pictures of the ingredients and telling you what to do, is that, you know, we don't all cook the same, and we don't have all the same ingredients. So I think there's little tricks you get by, you know, standing next to somebody and watching them cook, as opposed to just uh, reading a recipe. So um, when you're going to saute something like this, I'm going to do skin side down first. And I want my oil to be hot or it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan. And every once in a while I'm just going to stir my tomato sauce. This is also very similar to the beginnings of insemino, which is the squid stew done with Swiss chard and tomatoes and leeks, garlic, olive oil, and chili pepper. I would have sauteed the, the calamari cut into rings first taken it out and then done the leeks, garlic, olive oil, chili pepper, thrown the tomato in and then throw the calamari back in and finished it off and added the chopped spinach or chard. It's a beautiful recipe. Let me just see. That's not hot yet. Be right back and wash my hands. I'm a fanatic about that. Having worked in a professional kitchen, I hate having dirty hands. Sticky things. Okay. So, um, Tomorrow is uh, market day, again, in another town, so we'd love to go to markets. So I don't know if you saw, I did a little um, live on Wednesday, and at my market there was a new cheese guy who was actually at the market I'm going to tomorrow. So I usually go to my um, goat cheese guy. He's the formaggio del dottore, and tomorrow I ordered fresh ricotta from him, and I ordered also um, a little uh, half a kid, um, a baby goat to cook for Easter instead of lamb. And um, next to him is this other guy who I saw, actually met and talked to Wednesday, who's just in a town 10 minutes from me, has a working farm, and he does cow's milk cheese and sheep's milk cheese. So now I'm covered with all my cheese making. Okay, Liz, hi. Oh, just chanced on me. Oh, how fun. Well, it's going to be, um, Liz, these are going to get saved on Facebook, so you'll be able to see them. And then I'm putting them on my YouTube. So. There's a whole bunch of recipes that I'm just starting to do this new Facebook Live and then save them, and, and they'll all be there. Okay? So be sure to leave me some comments and any tips if you uh, make it at home. So here we go. Put it in the, the hot oil. Shake off the excess. Okay? And then we're just going to brown these and turn them. So I'll just take a minute. This is doing really well here. The sauce, oh, it smells so good right now. Now this smells like really good pasta sauce. Just these slow cooked, chunky kind of tomato sauce is really lovely. And it doesn't really matter if you use the canned uh, San Marzano tomatoes or if you use pureed tomatoes or the, the pomi in the box. Have you seen that? It's like a little wax milk box. That's a really good tomato sauce. It's really thick and I think you need to add a lot of water to that. But practice makes perfect. The more often you make something, the better you're going to get at it. The first time, um, it doesn't always work to me. I like to tell people the third time's the charm. Because even if you came here and you cooked with me in one of my cooking classes, we have different ingredients. So when you're going to go home, then when you find the right ingredients, you have to try to remember how you did it. So the first time you did it, something's going to be wrong. You're, because you're going to not remember or the ingredients are just not quite the same. The second time you're going to tweak it and it's going to be good, but the third time it becomes your recipe. So, like in my little cookbook, I have the recipe page and then the other page is uh, empty with lines to take notes, to correct it, to make it so how you make it, which is really all you ever want to do, to personalize things. I think that happens too, even with something as simple as um, chocolate chip cookies on the bag. The recipe from Toll House, we all make them, but how come none of our cookies are the same? It's how we measure our ingredients. It's... Uh, Oh, I didn't have enough brown sugar, so I used all white sugar. There's so many reasons why recipes tweak. Um, to be a recipe tester is actually a very hard job because you, know, when you have to really follow a recipe exactly how the person who wrote it wrote it. And sometimes people who write recipes are translating for a chef and maybe miss something. So it's not easy. So it may not be your fault if the recipe doesn't work. Can you hear? 
Okay, the tomato sauce is really thick now. That's perfect. This is, um, hi Dad, hi Maxie. I'm going to flip now my, uh, my little piece of bacala, and it's just getting golden on one side. So what happens too when you start to cook is that the food cooks from the part that's touching the pan up. Okay, so this is nice and thick. So I'm going to cook it on one side and it'll flip it and cook it on the other side. And I can actually watch the meat goes from translucent to like white when it cooks. And then it's going to finish steaming in the tomato sauce. So this is like a double cooking. Okay. Let me see if I could show you here. I don't know if you could see. But the fish actually starts to change colors when it gets cooked. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Oh, I'm dripping oil. Never mind. I'm going to flip that now. And if I wanted that to go faster, I could also cover it. And that would make it go faster. Okay. So this is a, a beautiful, very simple, simple recipe. Um, and it's beautiful. The other thing I wanted to show you I'm going to do is the, the simple garnish, which I usually don't do because I don't like parsley in my tea. I think it's not really something great to do for parties. Is, um, most fish dishes at the very end have chopped parsley. And it does give a nice flavor. So we have the Italian flat leaf parsley. Not the curly French stuff, so these look like almost like little clover leaves, okay? And I'm going to mince this up. And the other day, one of my friends, Carrie, said she would wish I would talk more about like what I use in the kitchen. So I'm going to show you. This is what I call my Italian food processor. This is a mezza luna, which means half moon. And um, I've just got my, my parsley here. And you rock and walk. And that's it. This is, I think, very therapeutic. One day I'll show you my Tuscan herb mixture, which uh, I call my porchetta salt. It's uh, rosemary, sage, garlic, and sea salt. Not something really nice to make, to keep for gifts, to cook with. Just in olive oil for, you know, we don't dip our bread in olive oil. Somebody was asking me about that the other day. They said, how come when you sit down in a restaurant to give you the basket of bread, and they don't give you any butter or olive oil. Well, that's not an Italian thing. Italians, when they come out to eat, come out to eat. They make their pasta, the main course, a vegetable, maybe two vegetables. They might have dessert. And bread, even in an Italian home, is used to, you know, clean up the plate and get the sauces from the bottom of the plate. But if you wanted bread with olive oil, you would order a bruschetta, which is going to be a toasted, we call it fettunza, which means greasy slice. Unza means greasy, fette is a slice. And so we would um, order a fetuta, and a barbecue piece of bread for you, rub it with garlic, drizzle it with olive oil, and it's an appetizer. So if you want something like that, you, or, you order it and you pay for it. You know, it's not like in America where all these extra things are built into the prices of baskets of bread for you, mostly you know, people are, you know, an appetizer, or even just like a single dish. If you're going to eat a single dish before, you would usually just um, stay home. So it's changing now. Though. They're making like, I found they've made bigger salads and, and kind of doubled up on the size of things and charge you more. Okay, I can see, this is probably not really good, there's a thicker, a white edge and it's paler in the middle, kind of like you may want like a tuna or something. A little raw in the middle here. But that's still going to finish steaming now. So I'm just going to put this skin side down, still again. in my tomato sauce. And let that go for probably another 10 minutes. And like I said, you could also just um, cover it. I'm using this oval pan, oval copper pan today. Oh, hi, Elsie. Ciao, thanks for stopping by. Um, so this is really nice. I usually cover it with the sauce because I really love the tomato sauce in this. 
it gets nice and thick. And then, I don't know if you know, but fish kind of gives off like a nice little gelatin when it cooks. And that kind of thickens the sauce too. So this actually now, you could actually just um, bake in the oven if you wanted to. So if you could prepare it up to this side, this, um, this part right here, and then you could um, hold it in a hot oven, and then we'll finish cooking. If the sauce gets too thick, then I would add a little pasta water or a little hot water to it. Okay. So basically, that's it. That's done. And then we're going to garnish it with the parsley. And then I'll, um, I told, someone told me that I should have my husband come and taste the food. <laughs> On my cookbook, I've got a little funny little thing that says Tuscan, Tuscan husband approved. Um, the first time I met my husband, it was my girlfriend and I, we had actually gone and we had rented an apartment from him and a friend of his in this huge, huge apartment in downtown Florence. And, uh, so we decided to cook for our roommates, for Andrea and for Walter. And I made um, a matrishana sauce, and my girlfriend made gnocchi with gorgonzola. And Andrea tasted the pasta, and he pushed, pushed away both of the dishes and just walked out of the room. Um, so it turns out what I did wrong was that I sauteed onions and garlic, olive oil, chili pepper, traditional. I browned my pancetta, and I left it in the sauce when I put my tomatoes in. And for him, you should take the pancetta out and then put it back in after the tomato sauce is cooked so that your pancetta is crunchy. Well, he married me anyway, so I'm lucky. Um, so, yeah, so oh, this looks so beautiful. I'll take a picture of this and I'll put it on Facebook so you can see how pretty it is. Um, it's a beautiful dish. And I think you could even do simple things like, you know, prawns a la Livornese or something. Livorno is very famous for its uh, fish soup, for its cachuco. Um, I'm from San Francisco and we have uh, chopino. Um, we have different fish from the ocean as opposed to the Mediterranean Sea. So uh, just recently, I think around Christmas time, I put the cachuco recipe on on my blog so you can see that. And it's basically the same thing, garlic, olive oil, and chili pepper. And then you would saute first your harder fish like this, like um, octopus and cuttlefish, and then the calamari. And I think it has a, maybe a splash of wine or the tomato sauce. And then once the tomato sauce is in there, the tomato sauce kind of stops things from overcooking and um, stews it more gently. So they're not going to turn into like rubber bands. You know the problems why people don't like octopus and all those things is because they get really chewy. Um, because it's either you undercook them just for a minute or so, or you cook them for an hour. So. Um, with the tomato, it slows down the cooking so it doesn't overcook. And then, when you've got all this beautiful sauce going with what, what we call rockfish, the calamari, the sepia, and the, and the polpo, then you start layering fish. So then I would layer um, a white fish, and it could be the cod. They would probably use uh, like a shark, polumbo, or a white meat fish with just like a singular, single bone in the middle, um, something kind of meaty. And so I would layer like, you know, one piece for each person on there. And then put a lid on it, let that steam, and then I would put some mussels, cleaned mussels inside, and let them steam open inside of there. And the last thing I'll put on top would be some prawns or scampi. Put the lid on, again, let those steam for like you know, 10 minutes or something. Take the lid off and then put that all on the table and it's ready. So what you would do again is make that garlic bread, like I, I did, um, I don't know if you saw the picture on Facebook. I toasted a piece of garlic bread, a toast, and rubbed it with garlic, put that in the bottom of the dish. And then with the cachuco too, you would dig down to the bottom of the, I usually use a clay pot, to the bottom of the pot, and grab all the fish from the bottom coming up and pour it on top of that piece of bread with some of that nice tomato sauce on top of it. So it's not really a soup, it's, um, it's a, a stew that's soupy. And the bread soaks up all this liquid, and it's the best part, I think, to eat at the very end. Oh, hi, Angie. What, the bacala is your favorite dish, or, or, or cachuco? Yeah, bacala is, um, I think, grandma food and mom food, and um, some of the, the funky old trattorias in Florence, like Trattoria Mario's, Trattoria Sergio, the ones around the, the market there, the old funky trattorias would always have bacala on Friday. They might have grilled calamari. Um, but Friday was always traditionally fish day. And again, like I said, we don't really have 
The beautiful expensive fishes, if you go out for a nice fish dinner at a place that's famous for their fish, it might be $70 a person. Uh, I think that's because there's a lot of waste. I think this fish is, um, is pretty much done. So you know when your fish is done, basically, is when it falls apart. So all you need to kind of do, I'm just making sure it's not sticking to the bottom here, is, uh, oh, I just gave it a little push and it fell apart. So that's done. So when it cooks, yeah, you don't want to make it fall apart too much. That's it. Let me just show you on a plate now. How pretty this is. So there's that big chunk that came off. And now I'll just take some of the sauce. Pour that on the side. So this with a beautiful salad, some nice chunky bread. Would be really gorgeous. So here's our... Hi, Kathy. Ciao. My old roommate, Kathy. She's why I moved here. So this is bacala libronese. And it, oh, it smells so good. It's just really one of my most favorite, favorite dishes. Um, this would be also good if you're doing those Italian Christmases, which, which Florence doesn't do with you. That's more of a thing from Naples or Sicily. Of the seven fish dinner, this would be one of the fishes you could serve. So uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever written up Bacala Livornese on my site. It's in my book. If you have my book, let me see what page it's on. It's one of my favorites, so. All the fish recipes are together. There's the insemino, cachuco. Must be before the insemino. Prawns, bacala livornese. Need my glasses. There. Page 137. So, um, maybe I'll write this up as a, um, on the blog too, and then I'll have my photographs and be able to give that to you. Ciao, Kim. How are you? So, thank you all very much for coming. Have a nice Easter, and if you do the recipes, um, please leave a comment and maybe post your picture, and also if you're going to, uh, you can follow me on um, the YouTube channel. That would be really nice, and share with your friends. Thank you. Ciao.